Welcome to our prayer meeting tonight. Our devotional thought is, He is coming. Are you ready? And our thoughts come from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In our reading from the Revelation, Jesus is called three things. First, he's called the faithful witness. You see, he came to reveal God to us. And if anyone wants to know what God is like, just look at Jesus. He's not just a witness. And a witness is someone that has observed God from a distance. He is the faithful or reliable witness because he is the one who is, who was, and who is to come. In other words, he is eternal. And his witness of God is true because he is God. Second, he is the firstborn from the dead. He came to earth for the purpose of dying for our sins, and he was resurrected from the dead to give us life. As sinners, we were spiritually dead and alienated from God. He came and lived a sinless human life and took the responsibility for our sins and died to pay the penalty God's justice demands for all our sins. And better than just dying, he rose from the dead to make it possible for us to be raised from spiritual death to spiritual life. And he is the ruler over the kings of the earth. In spite of what presidents and dictators or nations that hate us might think, Christ came to rule over them, and they will eventually give account to him for their actions. But more important than political kings, he rules over every evil influence in the world. And because of this, if we submit ourselves to him, he will help us to overcome every influence of evil that might come against us. The scripture says that Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood. Nothing else could take our sin away. Nothing we could do could ever make our own lives right with God. Just doing some good things cannot make us good. And saying we believe certain religious things cannot make us good. You see, sin is a moral condition that is part of the human moral makeup that we cannot change on our own. It must be purged or cleansed away. And only the blood of Christ is capable of cleansing a person from all sin. So, God took care of our sin problem himself through Jesus. All we have to do is accept what God has done for us and accept it on his terms. Now, we are not just forgiven. <clears throat> we are also made to be spiritual kings and priests with God. We are given the ability to reign over sin in our own lives. And because of this, we also are to minister the things of God to others that need him. We know because we have experienced it and we can certainly share that knowledge uh, with others. So we thank God for what Jesus has done for us. But there is so much more we must take into account in our lives. 
you see there is a future that is just around the corner. This future affects all people, including you and me. Let's read about that, verses 7 and 8. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Well, we thank God that Jesus came the first time to make our salvation possible. But a truth we must never forget is that he is coming again. And when Christ comes to earth again, he will call the end of time, and the Bible says all people will see him. All includes everyone that has ever lived and everyone that is living at the moment of his return. So if you die before it comes, you will still participate in these final events. You won't miss it. If you are alive when he comes, you definitely will be involved. The important point is to be ready for Christ's return, whichever side of death you might be on. Most important, be saved from sin and live your life for God. To those of us that are saved, the return of Christ will be a time of great glory and rejoicing. On the other hand, for those who pierced him, meaning those that reject his offer of salvation, for them it will be a time of great mourning. When Christ comes at the end of time, or if he comes for you in death, everything in life will be finished for you. You cannot go back and do something over. There will be no second chance. And there will be no exceptions. You cannot go back and say a kind word or speak words of forgiveness to someone you should have. You cannot stop and do something you should have done. And neither can you go back in time and not do some things you wish you had not done. You will not be able to make anything right with God. It's over with. You will face God just as you are at the moment Christ comes for you. So Christ has already come and made our salvation possible. Soon he is coming to call the end of time. So right now is the time to be ready for his coming. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Amen.